Hello and welcome to the wireless LAN videos on securitytube.net. This is video for understanding IEEE 802.11W amendment. This amendment is to protect the management frames. Up till now only data frames were protected. So what is the exact need for protecting management frames? What the 11W standard talks about? And there are some companies like Cisco who have already came up with the solutions in the market. So does that solution is a perfect solution? Uh, it is claimed that that solution is also having some flaws. So this presentation will mainly concentrate on 11W amendment and the way it is implemented by some companies. Every one of you will be having many questions about this new amendment to IEEE 802.11 standard. I will try to answer most of those questions here. If you still have some specific doubts, feel free to post it here or feel free to email me. I will try to create some videos around those doubts and post it to securitytube.net. So some basic questions that I used to have when I was studying 11W. Why, when and what? Why to have 11W? The standard will give some security for the management frames and it will be also robust against denial of service or DOS attacks. It is expected to be ratified by the end of 2008. Keep our fingers crossed that it gets ratified by 2008. And it is all about management frame protection and replay detection. Let's first talk about the state of art of the security and the problems that still we need to solve. IEEE 802.11i is the best security mechanism currently available with 11 suit. It talks about WPA2 and AES encryption etc. Now this 11i takes care of data frames completely and now all the data frames if proper security settings are applied are now secured. But still management and control frames are clear text. Now everyone's question why to worry so much about the management frames. They are just handshake frames for connection etc. So why to worry about management management frames and create so much fuss about it. It's perfect myth. With 11K, 11E, 11H etc. Lots of network related information and handoff related information etc. is now flowing on management frames. And since the existence of these action management frames, management frames have become vulnerable. Now everyone knows that deauthentication and disassociation attacks. Those are the denial of service or DOS attacks and which are again concentrating on management frames since deauth and disassoc are management connection related management frames. Solution to the problem posed in last slide protect the management frames so that the sensitive information will not go in the hands of attackers so easily. Now which frames will be getting protected? Deauthentication frames, disassociation frames and the action management frames which have been introduced recently. Now why not to protect all management frames? Because there is an inherent problem after IEEE 802.11i into existence any more security which will go to 11 standard has to be over and above 11i architecture. Now 11i uh, key handshake and key derivation takes place only after the successful authentication and successful association layer 2 asso association has been taken place. So all the frames which are involved till the association response frames cannot be protected and that's the problem with IEEE 802.11w management frame protection. Now food for thought for attackers, now you have to find the attack based on unprotected management frames with I have a hope that 11w will at least take care of the above frames and they will have cleared off all the loopholes in securing above frames. Now after IEEE 802.11w into existence, how management frames will look like? They will have a reason code field which is present as usual in the management frames. After that the information element, new information element management MICI will be added MMI and it will be a 18 byte information element which will be encrypted with the IGTK. IGTK will be exchanged after the standard group key handshake takes place. Let's have a look at this new information element MMI. It will have an element ID which is 1 byte, length 1 byte, uh, now the length is fixed to 18 byte. Next it will be a key ID present, it, it is a 2 octet key ID 
then a replay six octet replay field will be present and the MIC which is a message integrity check that is again standard eight byte MIC will be present. In this video we have talked about the necessity of 11W and how it is implemented shortly. In next video we will talk more about how exactly it is implemented and more about the Cisco MFP which is a proprietary implementation of 802.11W by Cisco. Thank you for this video.